everyone, Carly here from Tuckerton Seaport, and today I'm reporting from Parsons Clam House. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about what a clam exactly is, as well as the history of clamming in this area. So first and foremost, what is a clam? A clam is a mollusk. A mollusk typically has a shell, although not always. In a clam's case, it's something called a bivalve, and that means it has two shells on it, so on the top and on the bottom. Other bivalves consist of oysters and mussels. A univalve is a mollusk with one shell, so a snail. Uh, so clams typically bury themselves in the ground, um, usually vertically, like this, instead of horizontally. Um, and in order to harvest them, you need to dig them up. So in Tuckernan, um, we had a very lucrative industry of clamming back in the day, and we still do to an extent. Um, so much so that Tuckerton actually used to be called Clam Town. Now, how did clamers clam and how did they do it? So, clamers had something called lease lots. And lease lots was basically a piece of property you owned in the bay, in the water. And only the clamor who leases the lease lot can clam in it. And there were many fights over lease lots before, um, people that fought over them. Uh, today, we still have lease lots and the marine police look over them. Back in the day, you just had other people looking over them. Um, so basically, when a clamor goes to this lease lot, there's three different ways that they can harvest the clams. Treading, tonguing, and raking. If you look by the shore, I'm sure a lot of you have done the first one, treading. Treading is basically, you take your foot, you put it into the water, you move it around, and hopefully you'll find a clam. Now, as you can imagine, this doesn't really yield a lot of clams. You only find one, maybe two at a time, but you still need to go under the water once or twice to, to get them still. Um, and as you can imagine, that's uh, a person who does clamming for a living, doesn't just want to get one clam at a time. They want a lot. So the two other methods that clamers typically used uh, were the raking and tonguing. So I have a rake right here. And as you can imagine, uh, by its name, it's literally a rake, but like for the water. So what you would do is just this, and you flip it up, and voila, you have clams. Now, obviously, you can get more than one clam doing this method. Uh, typically about maybe, I think, 10 max, depending on the size. This was typically used for deeper water, sometimes off a of garvey. Um, and we'll talk about what a garvey is after this. The third method that you could do is tonging, and it's basically like a tong, and you just open it like this and close, and you'd get a lot. Now this is a relatively short tong. Uh, we have a longer one on our nature trail that is like over six feet tall, and the reason why these are longer is because you definitely use a tong off a boat, a garvey particularly, which is a shallow bottom boat. Uh, Barnegat Bay is extremely shallow, so you'd want a flat bottom boat to go through um, the bay. And that's what uh, clamors typically used, especially during the winter. During the winter is when clamming was the best. Now, you're probably wondering, oh, well, aren't the bigger clams found in the summer, aren't they better? Not necessarily. Usually in the winter, the clams were more media, and those were the ones that most people wanted. Um, uh, also, there's more clams in the winter than there are in the summer. Um, and they'd always obviously do it off their boat in the winter. Um, and another interesting thing is if there was ice over the lease lot, uh, the clammer would still go onto the ice, break a hole in the ice, and get their clams from there, either by raking or tonguing. Um, so they were always out there getting clams no matter the time of year. It's not just a summer thing. Now, I mentioned earlier that clams in the winter are better. The clams in the winter are uh, typically are smaller. Um, so how would you sort the clams if you have like a thousand clams in one day? You're not gonna do it by hand typically. You do it by using a clam sorter. That's a clam sorter and what you do is put the clams in. It'd go all the way down there um, and it'd separate the clams into three different kinds. The kind of clams that you're going to find in Barnegat Bay are hard shell clams and if you want to see them in person instead of in the bay, we have a bunch of them on the first floor of the seaport. Um, and also a little bit of background, another little bit of background on clams is that they are filter feeders. 
They help keep our bay clean by taking out stuff in the water um, and cleaning the water pretty much. They're filter feeders. Um, so that's it for today. Um, at Parsons Clam House, I hope everyone's staying safe and I hope you can, everyone can clam at least once during this summer. Um, all right, have a great day, everyone. So today I'm going to show you how to make a matching game using recycled clam shells. So if you have clam shells, you'll just need an even number of them so they each have a pair. Or if you don't, you could use another type of shell or even just cardboard or paper. So before you start, you can think of a theme that you want your matching game to have. Here I have a few um, clamming tools and I'll match them with the vocabulary word written on the other shell. So these, this is a pair of waders. So on my second shell, I can write that word and the person matching them will match picture to word. You could also do it where you have two pictures, two of the same pictures, and they could match one picture to the next picture. Um, so as far as materials, you could use a few things. For this one, I used paint and Sharpie, or you could also, if you have magazines or pamphlets, um, you could cut out images or print them from a computer and use them on the inside of the shell. So here I cut out my anchor and I can simply tape it to the inside of one of my shells. This is a cool option because you could keep changing what your matching game is and just simply remove the picture and add a different one if you want to change it. So for this one, I could then write anchor on the opposite shell and it would be a pair. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is if you have Sharpies or permanent markers, they write real easily on the inside of the shells. So I could use Sharpies to create my image like that. And this is a clam rake. So on my pair, I can write that. And I have another pair for my game. For this one, I created five pairs, but you can have any number that you want. I have a Garvey a bushel basket which is used to collect the clams and clam tongs which are also used um you could use tongs or a rake to pull them out of the sand or the mud set of images and words finished or if you're doing double images and they're all done you can flip them over and mix them up you can also decorate the outsides of the shells but you want to make sure that um, they all look similar so that you don't know which picture is underneath where so now you can go ahead and you can start playing your memory game. I turn the next two over. What do you have? <laughs> 